Once again, fulfilling the prophecy I've had that putting something off for way too long ends with you having such an enormously unpleasant experience that you end up putting a lot of other things off, I finally consolidated my storage units. I'd had a storage unit in Beacon for years, and due to a broken elevator, I was convinced to just let it be. Occasionally go there, grab a few things, digitize them or store them, but mostly wait for the day that the elevator started working again. As luck would have it, they finally fixed the elevator, and I began the process of getting out of that storage and getting into my new singular storage in what I consider to be an unusually painful day. Multiple people helped me, and it wouldn't have gotten finished without their cooperation. But what I really want to focus on are the ramifications of finally having one solid, small place where all of my intentions have come to what I think of as my final waiting room. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Jeff Atwood, Daniel Boyd, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. Storage and physical archive debt is a very unique consideration and one of the advantages of moving and consolidating all of my storage units into one means that I was able to audit how I, a veteran of a shipping container full of materials, was leaving the last number of dregs, to-dos, and long-term storage, and what it all meant. So here's what I've discovered. There's a small amount of material that I consider to be the remnants of the living of my life. Letters, correspondence, receipts, small amounts of mementos or pieces of plastic and metal that themselves are just talismans of stories yet to be told, a small piece of a coin that represents the time that I went to an amusement park with my parents, or a business card of a person long gone that represent moments and experiences that I've shared with them, and whose stories I may never get around to fully telling but which I will always appreciate. From there, we end up with pieces of items that I am keeping for various purposes beyond just the own record of myself. A small handful of vintage equipment and computers, merely for the fact that I'm known for being the person who is into these, and it comes up more often than I would like, that I need some sort of photographic evidence or props for work I'm doing. When MC Frontalot asked me to do a small amount of headshots for promotion, it was going to this collection, a Commodore 64, a joystick, and some electrical meters, to be able to give his poses that small amount of geek authenticity. Having a few hard drives or computers that I was using but don't use anymore gives me an opportunity to snap back if a very special presentation needs to be done with actual equipment on the stage. And occasionally I find myself in charge of a space or putting together some sort of display, and it would be nice to have something from arm's length. From there, we get to two different kinds of projects. The projects I'm going to do, and the projects I may never do. For example, I had a whole range of manuals delivered to me from a store that had closed, and while I think I'll be doing it, it is actually more likely I may just arrange for a funding drive to pay to have them digitized. So, It doesn't make any sense for me to be continually holding these in my own personal storage unit as opposed to one of the physical warehouses that the Internet Archive has. So, a very large amount of things went from my storage to FedEx. 
Then came the magnetic media, my to-do list of floppy disks, VHS tape, and magnetic that I have promised, one way or another, to turn digital. That effort is ongoing and will be absorbing at least a significant portion of the next couple years. And finally, a few items that I would best call aspirational, but not forgotten. Cases where I'm not quite ready to make that decision to give up on doing it anytime soon. Books, loose papers, and individual documentation that I still feel are within the range of a couple hours of work one slow afternoon, followed by me running through the streets, declaring it finally done. This collection, with the effort of these friends and volunteers who showed up, taken down to my already quarter-filled final storage, and I filled every single inch of it. It became one of those storage units that I'm sure many people have experienced, where the door comes up and you realize there's no way to go in. It stands like a joke of shelves and papers and all sorts of containers that I know, over time, I'm going to have to go over. Some of them, I suspect are actually mixed that are destined also for distant physical archives. But others are writings and documents that I've been keeping that deserve a run through a scanner, and which I hope people will see that I've been keeping them for many years for a reason. When people ask me for advice on how to deal with their own piles, I have multiple suggestions, some of which I usually need to follow myself. The first is coming to terms with the fact that you don't owe the world anything. It's nice to have these artifacts, these one-of-a-kind experiences, and to the best of your ability, you'll try to make sure that they find a good home, a digital counterpart, a place to be enjoyed by others. But weighing yourself down with a belief that you've been shouldered with a responsibility and every day you miss is a failure to fulfill that requirement is not going to take you to a good place. If I scan an old BBS list and bring it online, making it OCR'd and adding its entries to the BBS list, it doesn't matter what year I do that in. The existence of BBSs is proven. There are artifacts aplenty already online. A little bit of delay of another variation of stories there, it's not going to make that much of a difference. I'll do it because I want to. People should be doing these things because they feel they have the time and the bandwidth, mental or otherwise, to do it. I have no truck for unneeded guilt coming from within, for a perceived failure as a historian, or an archivist, or a keeper of the flame. It will be very interesting as I move through this storage to process exactly what's in there, one by one, bringing it back to my office, where during a live stream, people will see me figure out what these items are, do what's needed with them, and then either return them to permanent storage, discard them because they turned out to have been stored in error, or finding them a new home, either with the archive or with others. I've had the pleasure of giving away pretty much all of my early video game collections to places where they'll be played with, analyzed, evaluated, and made whole again by people who are thankful that I kept them as long as I did. There are machines that I think of as being dear to my heart that I don't need to have collecting dust inside of a storage unit that's costing me something monthly. The money that I am saving, consolidating storage, and hopefully one day moving to even smaller units, comes back a dozenfold in how I'm trying to work with other commitments and other things that I need to do. This 
process that I'm going through is a reckoning, an inventory, maybe a final one, of what I thought was interesting over the last 30 or 40 years. That enjoyment is probably not shared with everyone who finds what I put in. The resulting files that I put together will probably become some sort of ersatz museum online or maybe in some boxes for others to enjoy as well. If I do my job as a curator, I can maybe share with others an experience that a single object or a digital file represents. But it's not required by anybody, even those who admire me and follow my exploits, to consider it a required syllabus to understand me. I've lived a life, that life focused on collecting things, some of it simply because it was part of me, other parts because I thought the world should have a chance at it one more time. But we're not going to know, ultimately, if anything in there is supremely valuable, one of a kind, and the missing final piece for others, in the off chance that maybe, perhaps, it has some meaning. I'm looking forward, not just with trepidation, but with actual excitement, to see what this bounty, this shuffled, moved, consolidated, deconsolidated, boxed, and reboxed set of materials brings out to the world. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to James Bequianu, Mark Pilgrim, Emilio Oliveira, Ernie Hershey, Michael Rubin, Craig Talbert, Dileep Reddy, Sean Kelly, Trixie the Cat, John Sturm, Eugene, Martin, Sembiance, and Anonymous, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. I've seen what happens with various people who have done an excellent job of curating all of the artifacts from their life. One particular person I've really admired is Stephen K. Roberts, creator of the Microship and Computing Across America, who, even as he tinkers around, works on different projects, has kept so much evidence of what he's learned and worked on. And as a younger person, I read his books, experienced what he went through, his massive computer on a recumbent bicycle, and I was inspired myself to think of computing not just as stationary, sitting in front of a computer, but as a journey followed with equipment that augments but doesn't replace our human experience. I've seen other online museums, people who have put massive listings of things they've gathered, and to a person, many of them, don't survive too far past the end of their own life. Luckily, the Internet Archive, finding these often flat HTML files with photographs, has a way of saving them for other people to see. I take my inspiration from these people, that they thought, no matter what else, that they needed to tell this story, that others would find or not find value, but maybe, through that reckoning, that movement and inventory through the results of one's life, you find, if not an overriding meaning, a few conclusions about yourself that you can rest with 